Hi, this is Gary Rubenstein. This is part four in a series of tutorials on how to solve cubic and quartic equations. Um, in the first uh, three tutorials, we've gotten up to what's called the depressed cubic equation. Those are equations like you see over here where there's no x squared term. This one has an answer of um, x equals three. And another equation that we did that was much more complicated was x to the third equals 39x plus 380. This one had an irrational answer that was slightly bigger than 9. Well, in this uh, lecture, I'm going to show you how we could take a general cubic equation, something like x cubed plus 6x squared plus 6x minus 13 equals 0, and how to essentially convert that into a related depressed cubic whose answer will uh, enable us to get the answer to the original cubic. And this trick that I want to show you took a long time for people to figure out. They actually had the um, formula for the depressed cubic in about 1515. Um, and it wasn't until 1545 that they figured out how to use that to get the answer to any cubic equation. The process for turning a uh, general cubic equation into a depressed cubic equation is based on a trick um, that's now called change of variable or maybe change of axes. It basically works like this. If you have some sort of equation, here's a simple quadratic equation, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0. And this particular equation happens to have the answers x uh, equals negative 4, x equals minus 2 are the two numbers that make this equation work. <clears throat> well, if I were to make another equation like this, but in place of all the x's, I put something like y plus 1. If I know the two answers to the original equation, then I also can easily get the two answers for this new equation. You see, when y plus 1 equals negative 4, this thing's going to work. And when y plus 1 equals negative 2, this is going to work. So the, so the two answers are going to be negative 5 and negative 3. Now, if I were to actually multiply this entire thing out, it would turn into uh, y squared plus 8x, 8y, sorry, plus 15 equals 0. And that would agree, because uh, that does have these, these two answers. So the idea is, by replacing all the x's with something like y plus something or y minus something, we get a new equation whose answers are related to the original equation. Now, hopefully, that new equation might be easier to solve than the original one. Let's say we don't know. Let's say we didn't know how to solve this top equation. But we did know how to solve this bottom equation. That would be useful, because I would do this transformation of variables, solve the new equation, and the new equation would enable me to figure out the answers to the original equation. Now, in this case, x squared plus 6x plus 8 equals 0 is um, requires factoring. And this new equation, y squared plus 8y plus 15 equals 0, also requires factoring. The new equation is not any easier than the original uh, equation. But what if I were to instead replace the x with z minus 3? Six times z minus three plus eight equals zero. And look what happens when I work this out. If I actually expand it, I get z squared minus six z plus nine. And this middle thing becomes plus six z minus eighteen plus eight. And something kind of lucky happens. This six z would cancel out with this six z. And I would end up with the equation z squared minus 1 equals 0. 
And that question is much easier to solve. You get z, um, z squared equals 1, z equals plus or minus 1. Now, <clears throat> so this new equation was simpler to solve than the original equation. Well, since um, the x was replaced with z minus 3, if you take the two answers that we just got from z and um, plug them in for z here, we'll get the two answers for, for x, which is when you plug 1 in, you get negative 2. And when you plug in negative 1, you get negative 4, which were the two answers to the original equation. This is the basic idea. You can turn an equation into a related equation, and if that related equation is somehow easier to solve, it will help you solve your original equation. Now, let me show you how this applies to cubic equations. Imagine I have some kind of uh, general cubic equation. I'm going to leave off the coefficient the, on the x cubed because you could always divide through by that. So let's just assume that it's the a value equals 1. I have this. And I want to replace x with y plus something. Now I want to find the ideal value. I want to find a value that makes the, uh, the quadratic term uh, get eliminated. And we're going to just see if there's a way to figure out what special value of k would make that happen. Well, if you replace all of the x's with y plus k's, and you actually go ahead and expand this out, you would get y cubed plus 3y squared k plus 3y k squared plus k to the third. Uh, the middle thing would become by squared plus 2byk plus bk squared. Uh, the third thing becomes cy plus ck. And the last thing uh, just becomes uh, d. What's relevant for this is that we want to pick a special value of k so that there ends up being no y squared term. And the way to make that happen is by setting this thing equal to 0 and seeing uh, what k value would make that happen. So the coefficient here is 3k. So I end up with 3k plus b times y squared when I combine these. Well, I want 3k plus b to be 0. So I'll say, when is 3k plus b equal 0? I subtract b from both sides, get 3k equals negative b, and then divide both sides by 3 and get the magic value. When k equals negative b over 3, and I replace each x with y plus k, um, the new equation will not have a squared term. So let me now show you how this applies to an actual example. Uh, let's take x cubed plus 6x squared plus 6x minus 13 equals 0. By doing the substitution, x equals y minus b over 3, which is y minus 2. This equation becomes y minus 2 cubed plus 6 times y minus 2 squared plus 6 times y minus 2 minus 13 equals 0. Now when you simplify this, it turns into y cubed minus 6y. Notice that the y squared canceled out. Minus 9 equals 0. You can verify that on your own. Notice that if I now move this over, I end up with the exact depressed cubic equation that we um, did in the second tutorial. y equals 3 is the solution. Go back to the second tutorial to see how that happens. But remember, x equals y minus 2, which is 3 minus 2, which is 1, which is the answer to this question. And that's how this process works. We uh, do the substitution, create the depressed cubic, and then solve the depressed cubic, and then use the answer um, to solve the original cubic. I'll do some more examples in the next tutorial.